。好，各位观众，早安。好，欢迎来到四季讲堂夏季场的现场。各位知道，呃，夏季的星空最闪耀的三颗星组成的夏季大三角。然后现场呢，会呼应这样的天空，我们就安排的三位天文界闪耀之星，包括本内有教授，还有朱所长，还有孙馆长，来到我们这个现场。然后其实这样的这个星辰在天空里头是相距非常遥远的，各位知道吗？然后其实这三位啊，这个大忙人平常也相距非常遥远。今天有缘在此，事实上就是所谓的有缘千里来相会。各位知道这个缘是一个关键字，然后也缘也代表一个关键人物，他本身呢也是一个非常杰出的科学家。有缘，<笑>所以好，各位观众，请以热烈的掌声欢迎科技部国际事务及科学发展中心主任袁孝伟主任为我们开场致辞。大家早安。其实的确是一个夏日的盛夏，但是在夜晚的星空其实非常的美丽啊。我叫袁孝维，袁就是缘分的缘，幸好不姓庄啊，要跟大家报告一下啊，我姓袁。好，我要跟大家讲一下，今天其实非常的开心，有这样子一个机会。我们呃，全球事务与科学发展中心就是在科技部的支援之下，然后呢，我们成立这样子的一个中心。那今天很高兴跟科博馆还有吴建雄呃文教基金会，我们可以一起开始在这边展开一个天空下的女科学家。那我很简单的先来介绍一下我们的这个中心，我们的 Gase 哈。那 g a s e 呢？基本上我们有十五个推动委员校，也就是说 g a s e 事实上我们是一个从大专院校里面有很多国际科学的研究，我们希望能够把在台湾很多大学里面这种科学研究的能量能够发展出来，所以我们有十五个规划推动的学校。那另外呢，我们简台湾非常非常重要的人工智慧、生物机学科学、绿色这个能源科技、量子电脑、智慧机械、资讯这个呃一些技术，还有智慧农业、人文跟社会科学等等，这个是我们 Gase 办公室，我们在帮忙台湾，再把它行销到国内以及行销到国外。那我们借由不一样的方式，我们来行销推广，而且我们参与一些国际的合作，培育国际人才，促进科技的政策。所以，我们今天其实能够这么荣幸地请到 Dr. Benel， 然后还有朱友花，呃，这个所长，中研院过来的，那还有我们的孙卫星馆长，这三颗闪亮的星星，然后来给我们做一场丰盛的飨宴，其实就是我们在做这个。呃，全球行销传播跟国际合作交流，同时我今天看到有很多很多的年轻的人在这边，那更是我们在 GASE 中间很重要的任务，我们要希望能够培育一些的年轻的一些科学家。那我们呃有很多的合作的团队，那包含台台湾的像中研院呐、啊、国家实验研究院呐、啊、呃国卫院呐、啊，还有中山科学研究院，然后还有一些推动的计划的一些办公室。那特别现在很多的 AI 办公室、人工智慧的啊等等，都是我们合作的一些对象。那同时，科技部呢，在全球十三个国家有十七个分支的机构，那也是一样，帮忙我们台湾这么多的研发的能量，可以跟国际上做一些接轨。那我们透过各种不同的活动，我们来提升台湾的一些国际影响力，我们来培育全球的人才，我们来参与很多的国际合作交流，还有促进科技的一些政策啊。那这个在科技部的这种大力的推动跟指导之下，其实台湾在这方面是非常有利的一个科技外交。嗯、uh, ，今天其实就很高兴，我们就办理这个 Four Season Speech Series， 就是我们的四季讲堂，是我们的夏季讲堂。那这个讲堂呢，基本上我们会邀请这个国际上重量级的人物啊，然后跟我们台湾的这个相对应的一些科学家做一些合作跟这个对谈。那一般而言，我们希望他能够带来的不是他的专业太过于专业的专业知识，而是希望能够用他的人生的经历，用他的学思历程。用他在这个过程里面，他的求学，他的人生态度，跟各位人，呃，各位年轻人做一些分享啊。好，那我们已经办过春季讲堂，是有关生机医药的。那所以这回是我们的这个夏季讲堂啊。Ministry of s c e n t for Global Affairs and Science Engagement, GASE plays a critical role in facilitating global partnerships with diverse scientific research institutions. 
essay focuses on eight different research highlights. By inviting prominent thought leaders and renowned scholars to Taiwan, GASE thrives to enhance local and global scientific research partnership, encourage international exchange of talents, and maximize the power of Taiwan's scientific development. GASE is dedicated to foster international cooperation, straighten expert linkage, and organize most global summits. For future talents, GASE connects global network and university to host workshops, seminars, and annual thematic summer program for students. Here are 15 GASE steering committee university members in Taiwan. To strengthen scientific global network, there are 17 overseas science and technology divisions in 13 countries under most. GASE, your gateway to innovation and global connection. 好，所以请各位回去以后呢，就打 GASE 啊 ，G A S E 上我们的网站上去，还有我们的 Facebook， 然后来看科技部在推动像这样子的一个中心，我们能够带给大家很多很多有关台湾在大专院校里面还有这些科研的一些成果啊。好，那接着我给我们的主持人。好，谢谢袁主任。好，各位知道中子星呢，实际上是在。恒星演化的默契嘛，各位知道“孙”这个姓氏英文怎么拼吗 ？S U N 啊，上吗？上是什么意思？太阳，对 ，OK， 好，这代表一个比较相对年轻的恒星。所以今天的话，今天的主题会环绕在恒星主题，包括 Bernoulli 的中子星，还有当然我们的太阳。馆长孙伟清馆，你请以热烈的掌声欢迎我们的今天的主持人孙馆长。我第一次发现，我好像不了解黄俊林科长。要从来没有想到黄科长的致辞如此简短又如此有趣，很高兴今天能在这边欢迎各位来参加我们四季讲堂的夏季讲堂。很谢谢袁孝伟博士的安排，也很高兴袁博士的令堂也在现场。我们欢迎袁妈妈。你要跟呃孝伟的渊源很久了，在大学的时候，他的姐姐姐姐是袁孝英，是吧？是比我第一届的台大合唱团的同学。那据说那时候还到他们家去打过桌球。刚刚孝伟说的，那我好高兴，每次看到我们的学姐朱友花所长。中研院朱友华所长，我们也欢迎朱所长。他是台大物理系高我四届的学姐，非常聪明有智慧，讲话直言不讳，所以我们非常喜欢跟他聊天。每次看到了朱友华，就觉得好高兴，因为我觉得我就就变成一个小小学弟了哈。但是我刚刚可是又跟袁孝维一讲话就好难过，因为袁孝维说我当年是他的助教。我说有差那么多届吗？<笑>而周友花呢，在中研院天文所领导的非常好，让我们看到中研院在各个国际参与的计划以及国内培育人才的计划上都做得好精彩。每次我们想做什么活动，在台大天文数学馆看到中研院的海报一贴出来，哇，好好的条件，好好的环境去吸引年轻人参加。我觉得中研院在过去这些年来，把台湾的年轻一代带到天文科学这个领域，功不可没。那朱友花呢？他本身的研究做的极端杰出。我还记得我跟他有过些微的针尖对麦芒，因为我做的是极为遥远的类型体，这也是一个错误的结果。当年我一到了 UCLA 加州大学，我认定了我要做的领域就是太阳物理，因为我姓孙。I have no other choice. I have to do the solar physics. 那后来我的太阳物理的兴趣完完全全被另外一个非常好的老好人，但是讲课完全没有趣味的一位伟大的研究者给关掉了。所以我刚好碰到另外一位老师，美美国总统年轻学者讲 Matt m a l c o m 我就跟他做了类型体，从最近的这个星跳到最远的类型体，但类型体还是一颗星。为什么叫类型体？就是因为它的天上看起来像是一颗星，可是光谱呢完全跟恒星不一样。那我们就是从此 be fascinated by quasar 类型体。可是碰到朱友花
他就给我一盆冷水，他说 ：“Point source 有什么意思？就是一个光点呐、啊。”大家，就是个小光点，你什么都看不出来。哎，你知道朱友华做的是什么？我的天哪，满天漂亮缤纷的云气。这两个礼拜，我在我固定每周的那个线上演讲。上个礼拜讲的是灿烂星云看到恒星诞生，这个礼拜昨天晚上讲的是灿烂星云看到恒星死亡。恒星无论诞生或者死亡，它都是来自灿烂的星云的。那朱有花做的就是这个，所以而且它星云很多时候是集中在银河中心附近、银河盘面附近的，所以它常常到南半球去做观测。这是为什么？不知道他喜不喜欢这个外号，别人称他南天女王。前两天呢，我们收到了一箱啤酒，是很奇怪，馆长会收到一箱啤酒。上次是台积电的副总裁嘛，是台积电的副总裁，他自己退休了，开始做啤酒。然后那箱啤酒的名字叫做“女王陛下”。上次我们在个国际研讨会里面，我用英文介绍朱友花博士的贡献，介绍完以后我说我非常尊敬跟佩服这位学姐，但我不知道学姐英文怎么翻。我就当场问了朱友花，我说学姐英文怎么翻？她说 Your Majesty。<笑>我觉得很有趣。那讲完我们的呃主办人袁孝维博士，这个演讲是因为他的坚持，所以到今天终于能出现的。讲完了朱友花所长，能够邀请到他来跟 Dr. Ben 要做对谈，我觉得好精彩。都是两位杰出的女性科学家。那回到我们的主题人物 Dr. b e n e l l 身上，他前些年来过台湾，也是我 host 我接待的，还到了中央大学，那时候我还在中央大学，到我班上去演讲，真的是非常和蔼可亲的一位女士。但是你每次想到说，她就是发现了脉冲星，本质就是中子星的伟大科学家，弥补了恒星演化中最重要的环节之一的这位科学工作者，就觉得心里很震撼。尤其当年，当这一个脉冲星的现象首次被 Dr. Bennell 注意到的时候，这个例子我昨天晚上在肯丁天文台给学生上课，重复的又提出来：科学家能做出发现 （discovery） 很关键的在哪里？我们在 NASA Goddard 工作的时候 ，NASA 大家共用一个影印室，墙壁上贴了两个海报。第一个海报是一匹马在草原上奔驰。底下写的是什么？说如果你喜欢一个人，就让他去跑，跑到后来他会回到你身边，他就是属于你的；如果他不会回到你身边，他不会属于你，而且他从来没有属于过你。这个海报跟今天主题没有关系，只是好玩。<笑>这个海报跟两性关系是有关系的哈。另外一个海报很重要是 What is discovery? What is discovery? 什么是发现？你不要跟我讲发现是一个电视频道，不是。Discovery 是什么？是你看到了别人也看到的东西，而你注意到了别人没有注意到的东西。所以我觉得这就是 Dr. Bennell 所做的事情。每次这个例子我们不断的提出来，当他看到那个印表机 （line printer） 印出来的东西会有一个小小的颤抖，他就会回去找这个颤抖过去好像出现过的地方，而发现了脉冲星 （pulsar）。那这是我觉得他对整个。天文学界不只是恒星演化，对整个天文学界都有极大贡献的地方。中国大陆贵州天眼五百米的大天线做成了，主要的贡献也在发现更多的脉冲星，让我们了解恒星演化到了最后阶段是什么样的一个状况。虽然说它并没有得到我们科学界公认公推最重要的科学奖项，但是说老实话，我们觉得它的贡献远超过那个奖项了。所以我们都以最尊敬的眼光看着 Dr. Ben， 希望。他今天来跟我们杰出科学家朱友花老师的对谈，能够给各位，我想无论是男士女士，都能有新一轮的启发。呀，很高兴能在这边欢迎各位。我们今天的演讲内容啊，我想待会儿会有 Dr. Bennell 给一个四十分钟的演讲，中间呢我会一段一段的加入一点中文翻译，希望大家如果对英文没有那么熟悉的话，对专业的天文知识没有那么熟悉的话，也能够掌握大致的内容。那在那之后呢，就会请朱友花跟 Dr. b e n e l l 坐上台，我们站在旁边，忠实的扮演学弟的角色，<笑>然后呃，我们请他们两位对谈，然后我们来提出问题。但是在座的观众如果有任何问题想了解女性科学家在研究工过程上所发展的心路历程，也很欢迎，好吧？我们就这样进行好了。好，谢谢各位。
Good morning. I will try and speak slowly and clearly, and I think you will have a little bit of translation every so often. So, thank you for being here. Thank you from me for the opportunity to visit Taichung. It is my first visit here, and uh, I'm delighted to be here and grateful to all of you for coming this morning. Thank you. I want to say a little bit about the discovery of pulsars and a little bit about what those stars are. And uh -huh. it has stopped working. Okay. Oh, right, it's working there, but not on the screen. Sorry. Okay, right. So a little bit about the discovery, a little bit about what pulsars are. Um, one of the advantages of having discovered pulsars is every so often somebody comes up to me and says, you know, I nearly discovered pulsars, <laughs> and tells me the story of how they nearly discovered mm -hmm. pulsars. And finally, why it happened, when it happened. Oh, okay. So I am going to be talking about astronomy at radio wavelengths. This is what we see with the human eye, just this little bit. Here are millimeter and radio waves. So I will be talking about this kind of frequency, short wave radio, VHF close to television. Yeah, sorry, I'll get there. Okay, so this is a radio telescope in England. Um, it has just been made a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is a great accolade, but it will give the university difficulties with money because they have to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so some, uh, Dr. Yeah. Man, I'll translate a bit. 当然大家首先感谢了大家来听这个演讲啊，提到他自己做的研究，跟刚刚几个主要的topic，但这个是英国本身的一个无线电波天文望远镜、天文天线，但是呢，它被联合国教科文组织宣布成为了世界遗产，
and I'm not so clever. I come from up here. I think, ah, oh, they've made a mistake. They will send me home because I'm not clever enough. Okay, until they send me home, I will work my very, very hardest so that when they send me home, I will know I have done my best and I just was not good enough for Cambridge. Yeah, 到了剑桥，发觉别人都很聪明，很担心他会被送回家。但是后来他决定要努力工作，直到他们把他送回家为止。他要把最好的做出来。So that says the same thing. There is a wonderful statement um, by, I believe, an astronomer who talked about how people often are mistaken. But of course, I am not mistaken. I am right. When we started work, the new students were given a set of tools. I still have mine. These are big tools, strong tools, because we are going to be building a radio telescope ourselves. Yeah, 每人拿到一套工具，自己要动手做无线电波天线。It was a big radio telescope, fifty-seven tennis courts, and it took six people two years to build it. Yeah, 有五十七个网球场大小。This is the finished radio telescope. It looks homemade. It is homemade. <laughs> For those who like technicalities, it works at 81.5 megahertz. Um, it would cover 57 tennis courts, 200 kilometers of wire and cable. But it worked. Its purpose was to discover some new objects called quasars, quasi-stellar radio sources. And to do that, we had to follow very rapid signal fluctuations. Yeah, they were originally to do the image of the star. The main thing they wanted to do was the quasars, the quasars. Because the quasars are just a point, so they need to follow very fast signal fluctuations to find the source of the signal. A bit like in a swimming pool, if you lie on the bottom of a swimming pool and look up, you see these bright and dark patches go past. Yeah, if you are in the swimming pool, you will see these bright and dark patches go past. Yeah, if you are in the swimming pool, you will see these bright and dark patches go past. Yeah, if you are in the swimming pool, you will see these and we were using this fluctuation of quasars to pick them out. And in six months, I found about 180 more. So we had 200 by the end. Yeah, 一开始时候大家只知道二十个 quasar， 然后他们一起好了以后，就发现了一百八十个，总共两百个了。The University of Cambridge had one computer. It had less memory than your laptop. It was smaller than your laptop. It took a big room like this, but very little memory. And so very few people could use that little computer. And we could not. Yeah, Cambridge大学当时只有一座电脑跟房子一样大,但是它的记忆体比你的手机还小,很少人能够用它. The data came out on paper charts and was analyzed by hand by me. We had 30 meters a day, five kilometers paper in total. They only used the printed data to 
So quickly I got used to identifying the quasars that I was researching and quickly I got used to identifying local interference, radio signals from next door. But just occasionally there was a tiny little bit that did not make sense. This is low level interference. This was the first pulsar signal. Yeah,就是在这个过程里面呢, 平常要处理的很多是附近,来自附近的干涉讯号,就像图上面右边那个是附近的第一层次的干涉讯号,但是左边那个1919呢是第一个脉冲性的讯号。So this signal took about 10 parts per million in the chart paper, a very small signal. 这个讯号所占的是整个的这些印表机的值里面是百万分之十这样的部分,很小很小一点点。I will go back a moment. This is five millimeters, not point five centimeters. It's too tiny. We need an enlargement. So I go out to the observatory each day at this time switch to a high speed pen which enlarges and then go back to normal. Yeah,這段區域只有0.5公分長度,而是在120米的範圍之內,0.5公分,所以呢,他注意到了以後,以後整個訊號快要接近這個會產生這個奇怪訊號的地方,就換成一個高速的印表機的筆,讓那一段整
。对啊，经过测量距离呢是两百光年以外的，远超过太阳系的大小，但是是在银河里面离我们太阳比较近的地方。Okay, now we have a little physics lesson. 呃，开始要上物理课。So I am a child. I am playing on the floor. Meow. 小孩在地上玩。What is this? A car. A racing car. Meow. Yeah. When the car comes towards us, the pitch is higher. The frequency is higher. When the car goes away from us. The frequency is lower. It's called Doppler effect. Yeah, 如果说一个车子对着你过来，频率会升高，发出声音频率升高了，远离你的话频率会降低，就是杜布勒效应。So now imagine you are the radio astronomers. I am a little green man, and I live on a planet that goes round my sun. So I send out a signal: beep, 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 beep. When I come toward you, it's beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, 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 boop. It's like the racing car. 如果是一个小绿人坐在别的行星上的话，那个行星绕着自己太阳转，就会有接近有远离的时候，所以它发出来的频率会改变的。So I kept measuring the period of the pulses to see if there was this change, and we found a change. But now, let me get this right. You are the pulsar. I am the observer on the Earth. The Earth goes round the Sun. So here I hear you beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, 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 because of the motion of the Earth round the Sun, there is also that Doppler shift. 所以不只是波源运动会产生杜布的效应，地球自己的观测者在运动也会产生杜布的效应。So we had proved that the Earth went round the Sun. <笑>我们证明了地球绕着太阳转。<笑> And then one night, working late, doing some more of the analysis of the charts, my five kilometers of charts. I suddenly see. Oh, look at that! Could it be a second one? I get out the other pieces of paper for that bit of sky. You spread them out on the floor. You need a big area of floor, and you line them up. So this one, no, no. Maybe no. Oh, oh, and they all line up. So I go to the observatory. It's three o'clock in the morning. It's very cold in England in December. And I get the telescope working, and in comes beep, 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 another one. 在在某一天，他在工作了很多时候，有一天晚上竟然发现的，那上面有第二个可能的，然后把所有的五公里里面好多那些纸呃找出来以后呢，终于找到了第二个可能的范围。所以早上三点钟很冷的英国十二月，再跑到天文台去，然后观测到了第二个。So it's not little green men. There are not two lots of little green men, both signaling to Earth. At the same time, in the same stupid technical way. So, 不可能是小巨小绿人，不可能是外星人，因为你不可能有两组外星人从不同的方向对着地球发讯号。And a few weeks later, I found the third and the fourth. So now we have four, and that's good. We can publish 
，we can announce the result。所以后来第三个、第四的出现，就可以开始写发表论文了。The name Pulsar was coined by the science correspondent of this newspaper. It's subsequently been used for watches and Toyota cars here. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. 所以这个名字呢是来自那个报纸《Daily Telegraph》的主编给他取的名字，叫做 Pulsar。但是 Pulsar 因为太好听、太响亮了，所以后来连手表跟丰田的车子都拿 Pulsar 来命名。<笑> so what are pulsars? They are very tiny. They spin around, and like a lighthouse, they sweep a beam. Around the sky, and when the beam shines in our face, we get a pulse. They are very small, but they are very fast and spinning. They are like a lighthouse. They spread out their rays, and they shine across the sky. So they shine, 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 like a lighthouse. They are very small. They are about twenty kilometers across, and they have、uh, a lot of material in that. Space, so they're very dense. They are rich in neutrons. They're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they're like a neutron star. So they're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they're like a neutron star. So they're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they're like a neutron star. So they're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they're like a neutron star. So they're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they're like a neutron star. So they're called neutron stars. They're very small, but their mass is very high. And they spin very fast. The physics is very extreme. 物理是很极端的，因为它们有强烈的重力场、强烈的电场跟磁场，转动的非常快。And they're probably formed when a big star explodes at the end of its life. 也可能是像大于十个太阳质量的行星，到了生命晚期爆炸以后形成的。I will skip that slide. So. This is part of the sky that you can probably see quite well from Taiwan. It's called the Large Magellanic Cloud. Thank you. That helps. There are many, many stars. There is some pink gas, and one star is picked out with an arrow. The arrow was added after the photograph was taken. There are not arrows in the sky. Ready for us. 大家现在看到这个图呢，是大麦哲伦云，呃，它其中一个星云呢，蜘蛛星云右下角的地方，箭头指的那颗星呢，在右边就是爆炸的新的超新星了。他刚刚开玩笑说，天上是没有箭头的，是后来画上去的。So this is the same star. It has exploded, and in the in the explosion, the core has got compressed. 在这个星爆炸的时候，它的核心受到高度的挤压。And it makes one of these neutron stars or pulsars. And this is a famous nebula in the northern hemisphere. It's the remains of a star that exploded 1,000 years ago, and in the middle is a pulsar. 这就是将近一千年前，是九百六十五年以前啊，爆炸的一个超新星，北宋年间爆炸的，在北天可以看得到，中央就有一个中子星。So for the physicists in the audience, so the the mass is this, a few million 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 tons. And a size of only ten kilometers. Yeah, 大小十公里，但是质量很高，是好几倍的太阳质量。Which means they're very dense. They're like the nucleus of the atom, and they're rich in neutrons. So they're also called neutron stars. Yeah, 它就是跟密度跟一个原子核的密度是差不多的。而这个星体里面呢，呃，有很多中子，所以呢，它就是叫做中子星了。To help explain the density, take a sewing thimble, a nice silver sewing thimble. Take the population of the world, everybody in the world, and jam them 
into the thimble, one by one, when you have the whole population of the world jammed into that thimble, it weighs the same as if it was full of material from one of these stars. 他这样讲的就是说，你把一个像缝衣服时候用的顶针呢、啊，套在指头上，像戒指一样的顶针，把世界上所有的人，地球上所有人，六七十亿人摆到这个顶针里塞进去以后，它的密度就是中子星的密度了。Because the gravity is very strong, it bends light, and if I stand on the surface of the star and look around. I can see over the horizon. I can see about two thirds of the star without moving. Because the gravity is very strong, so if you stand on the surface of the star, you can see over the horizon. 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 If there were little green men on this star, it would look like little red men to us. That 重力另外会产生红位移的红移的效应啊，所以重力会让红光你看得到红光，所以小绿人会变成小红人。And gravity also affects clocks, so this clock will do one tick every two seconds, not one tick every second. 重力也会减延迟时间的，减慢时间的。所以呢，在 POSA 表面，它一秒钟是我们地球上的两秒钟。And not only is there very strong gravity, there's very strong gradient of gravity. So suppose I'm coming in to land, and I'm coming in feet first because that's the ladylike way to land <laughs> on one of these stars. As I come in, gravity is pulling me down, but it's pulling my feet harder than it's pulling my head, and my body gets pulled apart. And first of all, my feet drop off and land, and then different bits of my body with the head last. Yeah, because gravity, its mass changes very quickly. It's a very strong mass. So, if we want to go up, it says the foot has to go up first because it's like a woman who has to go up first. But the foot will go up first, and the body will go up first. Because it's very strong, it's very strong. So, if we want to go up, it says the foot has to go up first because it's like a woman who has to go up first. But the body will go up first, and the body will go up first. So, don't go visit. Don't go there. Don't go there. There's very strong magnetic fields. There's very strong voltages, so although the gravity is strong, the electromagnetic forces are a hundred billion times stronger than the gravity. 电磁的力量是呃十亿百一千一千亿倍的重力的力量，非常强烈的磁场，还有也很大的电压差。对 ，OK. But because they're very heavy, once they get spinning. They keep spinning, and nothing stops them. So they come round and round and round very accurately. They are very good clocks. Since the age of the dinosaurs, dinosaurs, they have changed their part, their clock time by about one part in a thousand million million. 也是个，因为它是很重，质量很大，然后密度很高，旋转起来的周期非常非常的准确。所以从恐龙那个年代到现在，大概也已经将近是一两亿年了哈。它的时间只改变了一秒钟。So they're very good clocks, and we now have clocks throughout the universe, and we can use those clocks to test Einstein's theories of relativity. 你如此标准，所以可以用来测试相对论。So some special records. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this number of times the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this number of times the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this number of times the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this number of times the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this number of times the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. The pressure at the center of a pulsar is this Yeah, 最快的 pulsar 是这样，一点五五毫秒，也就是千分之一秒啊，一点五五千分之一秒。
the first planets found beyond the solar system were planets round a pulsar. Here's a pulsar, and here are the planets. Yeah, 最早发现的系外行星竟然是环绕这个 pulsar 的三个系外行星之一。The roundest known thing in the universe is the orbit of a pulsar around another star. It's accurate to five microns, one tenth the width of the human hair, in half a million kilometers. 他说，宇宙里边现在知道最圆的东西就是这一个 pulsar， 它的轨道绕着另外一个恒星的轨道，在五十六万七千公里的距离里面。它的轨道这个圆的变化只有五个微米。And if I was to drop something onto the surface of a star pulsar, it would hit traveling at half the speed of light. 你把一个东西丢到 pulsar 表面，因为重力加速的关系，它最后撞击表面速度是二分之一的光速。I will take just a few minutes. To describe some other things, because people have said to me, "I nearly discovered pulsars," and here's the story. Because he is a discoverer, so he has said to me, "I nearly Public viewing, and a young woman steps up to the telescope. The telescope is shining at that Crab Nebula, the funny star in the Crab Nebula, which we now know is a pulsar. And the young woman says, "That star's flashing." And the night assistant, hey, it, it's it's scintillation. It's okay. That star's flashing, she says. She says, "I hold an airplane pilot's license." This is 1957. A young woman in the USA flies airplanes for her job. She flies at night. She knows the night sky. She knows the difference between scintillation and flashing. That star's flashing. So, in the Texas Television Tower, one evening. 一个年轻的女的在那边看望远镜，对公众开放的，会说那个星星在闪耀，而那个女的，年轻的女的是有驾驶执照的，一个飞行员，她很清楚的知道什么东西是闪耀的。We now know that that star is a pulsar. It flashes thirty times per second, but some people can see thirty times a second. 他现在知道，他当时看的星是一个脉冲星，没有错，每秒钟闪三十次。但有些人还真的能看得到一秒钟三三十次的东西，看得出来。In Canada, the electricity used to be at thirty hertz, thirty times a second, and a number of people, particularly young women, could see the lights flashing and the television flashing, and it was horrible. So they changed to sixty. Yeah, 在加拿大早年的时候。灯泡的电力频率跟电视是每秒钟三十次，而有一些年轻的女女性真的是可以看到这样的闪烁，对他们来讲很痛苦，所以后来他们把频率改成每秒钟六十次。So Elliot Moore was a young student helping for the summer, and he tells this story, and he says nobody followed up. 这个人呢是当时的年轻的研究生，在那边帮忙的这个望远镜开放。那很可惜，他说后来没有人针对这个女的所讲的话去追踪观测。嗯、um, ，In July 2007, the Australians suddenly got an email from somebody in the United States saying he had been a technician、um, 1967-68 in Alaska. At an early warning site, and he had some spare time, so he used the equipment. He found 14 pulsing signals,、uh, and he has just discovered the online catalogue 
of pulsars and realized that some of his pulsing signals were pulsars. 他就说了，空军的一个美国空军一个技术人员，在一九六七到六八的时候，在阿拉斯加的一个早期预警的飞弹监测的这个系统里面呢，用他们自己的设备，闲着没事就开始，就全天去找，结果找到了十四个有脉
and now with big telescopes you have to use computers, would we have told the computers to look for this kind of object? So, these two things are very important. The first is POSAR is an unexpected discovery. It is not in the original observation plan. The second is that if we were to use the computer to search, the computer would notice these unusual phenomena. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you so much for the translation. Wonderful, Dr. Pannell. It's very, very, very informative. Okay, 那我想很精彩的演讲，短但是很精彩。那我们现在就接下来底下的对谈的阶段了，好不好 ？You want to take a seat? And you, Hua. 哎呀，我想刚刚看到的这个呃例子呢，尤其是从 Dr. Pannell 自己讲出来的这样子的心路历程，特别受到震撼。那我觉得他甚至比我上次在中央大学的课堂上讲的都多好多。刚刚大家看到他跪下来让表演小孩子赛车，我都觉得好感动。在中央大学的课堂上，他是拿 Remember you had a red ball and green ball in my classroom a few years ago, and you going like that to yeah to demonstrate a Doppler effect. Still, it's quite impressive. 这印象很深刻的。然后我觉得很重要的一点，他刚刚提到的是人的判断。是不是能够用电脑取代？如果说他那个时候就有电脑 ，if you were using computers at that time, were you able to, well, clever enough to tell the computer what kind of signals to look for? 就可能就没有办法让电脑去找寻所有的不正常的现象。那这是一个。那另外一个，他刚刚也讲到，除了你说电脑寻找之外，那这些特别的现象。呃，真的需要人的关注，尤其是。Why I had one question first for Dr. Bennell, and what was your feeling at the time that you noticed the interval between two flops is 23 hours and 56 minutes? What was your feeling at that time? I knew instinctively that it was up amongst the stars. So when my supervisor first said, it must be man-made, it must be terrestrial, I knew it could not be. But uh, I needed to show him the data to really convince him. First, I want to tell you, when you learn the Chinese, you know what the meaning of 23 hours and 56 minutes is. It's a day-to-day day. 24 hours is when we're turning the Earth around one hour. 把太阳带回到中午，这是我们的太阳日，多了四分钟。但是学天文的人都是用恒星日，对遥远恒星，地球整整转一圈的。所以他发现了两个讯号距离二十三小时五十六分，他就知道这个讯号是来自重心之间的，他绝对不是地球上的讯号。但他的老板不相信，老板还叫他重新去复查。每次我看到他讲了去复查，那么大一片无线电望远镜要去查什么地方坏掉，是很痛苦的事情。但是他坚持说那是来自重心之间的讯号。OK， 那有花 ，Want to make some comments？ 你先讲几句话。我们欢迎朱有花所长。呃，我要用中文还是用英文讲？用用中文，我想中文用中文讲。然后你跟我最近在那边做一件做一件事情啊，他做的事呢，他一早就发现的。我我最近这几天前几天我在那边写一篇 paper， 那报告的结果是。我做白矮星，我除了做星星云之外，还有做白矮星。这个白矮星，我以前看到它的用用看它的 X ray 的光光光谱，就发现白矮星啊，它它即使温度再高，它的它的发射出来的 X 光哈，那个温那个它的能量不能太高。可是这颗白矮星，它它的 X ray 的光谱里面有些高能量的光子出来，我就觉得很奇怪，所以我就是写 proposal 去去申请观测时间。我先最早是是用 Rosa 的那个 X-ray cell 来就看到，只看到二十五个光子，二十五颗光子。那它的那个 signal to noise ratio 是五，所以应该是观测到，可是不能取光谱，就是只看到那边有一些高能量的光子在那边。就写 proposal， 人家就说这怎么可能？这绝对不可能，这是这是白矮星啊！我说这个白矮星它没有半星，他说这怎么可能是绝对是？你可能是有个背景，就有个有个背景的四类星四星体啊，什么东西啊？它那个刚好光就在里面。我写婆婆写了七次，总算拿到时间，就拿到时间啊，结果那个
，又有一些问题，又还又再写 proposal， 就总算拿到 data。我们就最近就上个礼拜才发现结果，就那个其实我们算就做一些算算那个用物理算一下哈，它那个高能量的那个那些光子是真的，而且是可能是一个是一个小的小的物体绕着白矮星这边转，然后它它它的那个它的。它的距离很近，它超过它的 Roche Roche lobe， 所以所以有那个有有物质就喷流喷就会被吸到那个白矮星上去，它吸到白矮星上，它放射出能量，而就就产生这个 X 光子。然后这个这这个这个这个小物质物体哈，可能是质量非常小的星星，或者是一个行星，会像像 Jupiter 一样行星。我这一辈子一直在没找，我跟你讲这个、这是真的故事哦，我一直在想找 Jupiter。像那个木星一样的行星，绕着白矮星这边转的，我想我们最终终于找到。我已经学生跟我讲说，说老师，如果说找到 Jupiter 的话，哈，绕着白矮星 Jupiter 的话，我们要去命命名叫叫什么名字呢？我们叫它 Jupiter。<笑>我先注意，为是 C H U， 他说我们找到的话，我们一定叫它 Jupiter。我想我我最近很高兴，我最近已经非常高兴，因为我好像终于找到一个 Jupiter。<笑>可是我这个不会拿都不会讲，你放心，绝对不会。只是很高兴就好了。<laughs> yeah, Yu Hua is describing to the audience that the, the new, the latest paper that she wrote about an object、uh, around revolving around a white dwarf, and that gives material to the surface of white dwarf and then inducing X-ray photons. So we, we just, I think we just found a planet orbiting around a white dwarf and accretion the material from from the planet to the white dwarf,、mm -hmm. uh, and can.、Uh, can Gives out the hard X-ray emission, so I think that this is, might be the first case of a, like Jupiter orbiting around hot white dwarf, and gets a. And my former students told me that if we find anything like this, we're going to call it Jupiter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this might be the first Jupiter discovered. Her so, last name is Chu. Yes. So <laughs> Jupiter plus Chu is Jupiter. Excellent. <laughs> 应该叫丘比特，是不是？你说个爱神小的小飞人吗？在里面飞的吗？丘丘比特。OK， white dwarf， but that seems to be a common thing。因为一个 white dwarf 旁边有 planet， 应该就是 after five billion years for solar system， 我们会看到 Jupiter 在一个 white dwarf 旁边嘛。And this should be common。这个是非常很奇怪的题。我我刚才提这个事情，并不是要炫耀我自己啊，因为我就我讲是说。我当初开始要做的时候，我写 proposal 写了七次。我看那 Ruffy 也讲说<笑> ，Ruffy 有些 Ruffy 讲说，哎，这个从来没看到过，所以你不用观测。哦，有些人讲他说，这个一定是一个背景，一个是背景的，一个背景的缘。啊，没各式各样的理由啊，全部就把我打，全部全部就说说，就就不给我时间，不让我观测。一直到最后是他是用 XMS 是一个欧洲的 X ray cell 来，他给我 C target，C target 说，哎呀，我们有时间的话就会观测你的。呃，就不过还好，运气好，嗯，那观测到了，所以证实全部我我们以前那个 propose 东西都是对的。Yeah， 所以的 A target 是最重要的。对 ，C target 就是哎呀，有时间会帮你看一看，没时间你就<笑>你就再写吧，再写 proposal。对，就是我想坚持到底很重要啊。刚刚呃 ，Dr. b u r n e l l 也讲了很重要的一点，就是现在的 proposal writing， 你写计划书呢，你要说什么？你要说我要去看什么天体。<咳>然后把这个天体的详细的性质什么全部都写出来。问题是 ，POSA 根本没有人看过，你怎么知道你要找什么东西 ？I remember that's the same、uh, sentence, same、uh, thing that Dr. Ferdinand Coronetti, the chairman of UCLA Astronomy, told me when I、uh, graduated from UC UCLA. And he said, the current proposal is ask you to write everything before you discover it. 你在发现它之前，你要把所有东西全部写出来。他才能给你时间，那你都写出来，你还用用时间干什么？所以这个 logic 是错的，是很奇怪的。但是问题是，发现性质的观测，就像刚刚朱友华讲的，你很难去通过审查委员会，因为你每个人讲的都是一套，你还没有发现，你得你要怎么说？这是为什么发现性质的观测很很难？朱友华，你讲，你去看申请 X ray 的时间嘛？ Yeah, X ray。可是我有一点哈。Regarding your question, you said if it were now, can people still find the pulsar from the data? I think we can using machine. If people use the machine to make survey, I think we can. The,、yes. the big surveys, 
And the archival data with the all sky survey, in the consistent survey, is that and monitoring the sky and with, in the time domain, mm -hmm. so with this a huge data set, mm -hmm. I think people can use AI, artificial intelligence, and people can make some, make some very smart search engine to go search for information from the data. I think it's possible. And I was talking about the finding hard X-ray emission from white dwarfs, and that's based on archival data. And just like when you look at data, you just have to have an open mind and look at data and look for things that's unusual and persist and try to find out the answer. And that's what we did. But computers will do what you tell them to do very well. But how do you tell a computer to look for something that you don't know exists or what it's like? You just look at data yourself. Yes, yes. OK. Yeah. <laughs> but with telescopes like LSST with 10 million alerts every night? <laughs> Yeah,主要花是说,现在的电脑加上人工智慧,你可以让它去搜寻大数据里面的anomaly,不就是特别的地方,奇异的地方。但是,Dr.Bennell说了,LSST即将在2022年登场,是不是?LSST是个全天
，菲尔斯还比较好的那个，那女是可以住那里面，所以其实因祸得福。Yeah, and because of that, because it was too dangerous for a woman to drive home after observing at night, and she could not stay in the dorm, so women were often directed to studying the sun, solar physics, daytime astronomy. Oh, the excuse they gave at Hathcote Observatory is that women are too distracting. Oh, and so women are too distracting. If they live in a dorm with the guys, it's dangerous. Oh, two meanings are different. Doctor Brunel said that women cannot live in the dorm with the guys. If they live in a dorm with the guys, it's dangerous. Oh, two meanings are different. Doctor Brunel said that women cannot live in a dorm with the guys. If they live in a dorm with the guys, it's dangerous. Oh, two meanings are different. Doctor Brunel said that women cannot live in a dorm with the guys. If they live in a dorm with the guys, it's dangerous. Oh, two meanings are different. Doctor Brunel said that women cannot live in a dorm with the guys. 这不是女孩子的错，这不是男人的错啊 ，right？ OK， 好，有没有其他的问题啊？好，好啊，后面有有一个问题在后面。Dr. Dr. Bernal, welcome to the Taiwan. It's my pleasure to attend attend the speech. But uh, I have the small questions to the, to the Mr. Uh, to the Dr. Bernal. Uh, can you tell me that when you when you when you used to find the when you used to, when you set up the when you find the uh, sorry sorry. What's the feel? What's the feel? Uh, what's your feelings if you uh, uh, use the computer? You sit up in the com in the front of the computer to find the small po small po small point about that uh, the power start. But you you want to ask what? You want to talk Chinese? We translate into English, okay? What do you want to ask? Ah, please. Just say. 呃，大家不是那样子。请问一下，你的如果假设说，当你在呃熬夜，整天熬夜在寻找这个这个脉冲星或类星体的时候，你当下的一个感觉是什么样的一种感觉？当因为本身发现这种东西是非常长远的工作，而且有时候都是要好几天、好几个月、好几年都没有成果。那面对这样的一种困境啊，或者是这样的一种无聊的工作，你的那种感觉或者心情是什么 ？Yeah, after a, a very long and tedious、uh, observing work without discovering anything, and finally you discover something.、Mm. And what was your feeling?、Mm. Well, I was getting a lot of material for my thesis on the quasars, so that was going well. But because I was so scared that I was going to be thrown out and sent home, because I was not clever enough, I was being very, very careful, and that's why I noticed this half centimeter signal that did not make proper sense. It was a puzzle, and I was checking that out when it became clear it was a string of pulses. Okay, so he that time. 看到了，他主要是在做类星体搜寻的类星体巡天的论文，但很小心，因为他很担心他会被送回苏格兰老家去。但是呢，他看到了这个零点五公分的小的东西，他知道那不是一个正常的情况。I thought, Doctor Burnell, you have two choices then. First one is just put it, set it aside. We'll come back to that later, and then finish my quasar thesis properly, or you just drop the thesis and come back and, and go directly to. To post ours. So, what was your choice then? I did both. Two doctors, so you finished your thesis still on quasars, yes. but you you made this discovery. The pulsars went in an appendix because my thesis advisor said it was too late. University regulations, too late to change the title of my thesis. So the thesis had to be on the scintillating quasars, and the pulsars were in an appendix. 
So the major discovery is contained in the appendix of your thesis. <laughs> 所以你看，他说他的指导老师呢，教授说了，时间已经太晚了，接近他博士论文要交交的时候，这个时候不能再改他的题目了。所以真正的伟大的发现 p o s a r 是他的博士论文的附注里面，博士论文还是在 q u a s a r 上面，但博士论文的附注里面注明了这个重要的发现。所以这也是很有趣的事情。They should have given you two PhDs, two theses. 你看拿到两个博士学位啊。I did hear one of the examiners say, "I suppose we have to give her the PhD." He said, "One of them said we must give her a PhD." Are there any other questions? Let's move on. I want to make a comment. The comment that was asked was, "He said, 'This is a very boring job. I'm fancy that I can't do it. 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 那个 data 进来的时候，你然后再分析了，非常有趣，一点都不无聊啊！就像你们小孩子有些人打电动，就因为成天打电动那么无聊，这边做这么无聊，那打电动人你在打什么？好好玩哦！我们我们做观测的时候啊，好好玩哦 ！Exactly, exactly， 那也是我刚刚想讲的话。说你你不要觉得只有在发现那一刹那，你的生命才有了价值，有了回报，不是，整个过程都是很有趣的。我们也是一天到晚上山下海到天文台去做观测啊。那你也不知道这观测到底出来什么结果，但整个观测的过程就是充满了喜悦跟跟乐趣的。呀，打电动玩具我们真的是不知道，但是我常常常常在有馆长室八楼晚上看到我们底下的科普馆的广场，面对我们的广场，看到底下一群人，一群人手上拿了一个发亮的东西，两眼无神，茫然的这样四处乱走，你以为是恶灵古堡的场面出现了。没有想到他们在抓宝可梦，你要说这不都无聊的要死吗？他们却乐在其中。学天文的大概跟着恶灵古堡差不多。<笑>好，齐红，你要问什么问题？我们把麦克风拿给齐红。嗯，因为我不会英文，所以我是用中文发问。没关系，台语也可以，台语。<笑>可是我台语也不会，所以我得用中文。啊、哦，好好好，可以。嗯。我的我的问题就是因为脉冲脉冲星它能够被监测到，是因为就是它的磁场把辐射跟所有的能量都聚焦在南北极，然后以非常高的能量发射出去，所以我们看得到。那因为就是刚就是刚才老师嗯呃就是哦哦对，刚才刀特刀特。他说：“不不，他说本没有。他刚才刚才有说，就是脉冲星它旋转的周期是非常准确，从恐龙恐龙六千五百万年前到现在，它只有差一秒。可是如果说这脉冲星它一直不停的在损失能量，用用辐射的方式不停的在损失能量，但是它的周期却还是这么的准确，这是为什么呢？在地球上，如果说一个转动的物体不停的在发射能量，它就会越来越慢。可是，在脉冲星上好像就没有这种现象，这是为。”Um, to, why is the, the pulsating um, period so accurate for pulsars? Uh, like you said, uh, since the uh, dinosaur age, uh, the uh, accuracy still remains very good. But in, on the Earth, we can see in the lab that rotating object is uh, losing energy rapidly. Mm -hmm. And how come yeah. quasar can, uh, pulsar can stay that accurate? They have big mass, so they have a lot of inertia. Actually, the problem is stopping them, not keeping them going. <laughs> um, just because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, they keep going. Because they are so heavy, once they get going, But just add some more to the uh, pulsars in, in the center of crab. That's what we learned from grad school. Pulsars are the only ones that are still able to make light after 965 years. It's because of the energy from the brain. This huge energy from the brain, and then the 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 energy from the brain, it's still able to make light. It's because of the brain energy. 所以我们以前研究所就做过这个作业，你要计算它每多少百万年损失的那么一点点速度所提供的能量，就足够让蟹状星云发光发热。Yeah.
。我我再补充一点啊，因为中子星它能量很多，它所以虽然发射出去能量之外，它还是能量还是很多，所以它的转的周期还是很快。它周期实在实在是有有。慢慢减慢下来，可是减慢的很少。就像你说，我这个百，如果说我是百万富翁，我一天只花三块钱，那我你我过了十年，过二十年，我还是百万富翁啊，因为我没有花多少钱呢、啊。我一天花三块钱，对我百万元而言，根本不是什么一回事。所以中子星它因为能量很多，它发射出一些能量之外，它能量还是很多，所以它转的还是很快，它实际还是有有有有慢慢下来一点。那我你看，我一天花三块钱，我过一百年以后，我哎。我还是花了一些钱，我钱还是会慢慢花掉了。<笑>可是我还是很多钱，可是我钱还是有慢慢在花掉，就钱还是有少一些了。秋、哎、发，你这个比喻很好啊，你应该多讲讲科普演讲啊，对不对？讲百万富翁，嗯，对，对。我今天拿的收入就是一百万哦。你一百万啊？你要给我一百万。OK <笑>。女王陛下的成绩是不一样的。<笑>我拿一百万，每个人花三块钱。呃<笑> ，Dr. Benel， 哎。After you discovered Ozars, I think Ozar become a one of the major area in standard evolution. But you know, we're talking about a thousand year, how do you call it, millennium anniversary for for that Chinese supernova 1054.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, is only 35 years away. Yeah. So,、uh, have you uh, joined any、uh, celebration of the anniversary of、uh, the past things about that? Pulsar, crap. We we've had celebrations of the discoveries of pulsars,、uh -huh. and we we noted the anniversary of the、uh, Crab Nebula explosion. Yes,、mm -hmm. but mostly it's been around the pulsars themselves that、okay. I've been involved. I think other people for the Crab Nebula thousand yeah. year. Yeah, last time when I was still in National Central University, we have. We had this 950-year anniversary for Crab Nebula.、Mm. 上一次我们在中央大学的时候、mm. 庆祝过九百五十周年蟹状星云爆炸的，就是一零五四年爆炸的九百五十周年。别人就会说：“你们为什么不等一千年再庆祝？九百五十年有什么意思？”我要那还要过很久。<笑>所以到现在为止，蟹状星云 the、uh, the Crab、uh, Crab Nebula has existed for. 965 years already, so it's only 35 years to go. You can 一零五四年到二零五四年，就从现在二零一九到二零五四，只剩下三十五年了。所以，尤其是这些年轻朋友们，三十五年以后，你要记得孙馆长曾经说过，要庆祝蟹状星云的一千周年。Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll let the young people here in the audience remember in 35 years, you will have to hold activities. Yes. yes. 好，有没有其他的问题 ？OK， 哎，我们袁校委有缘千里来相会的缘。好，谢谢啊。呃，我是 g a s e 的主任，那同时也是台大森林环境暨资源学系的老师。那我做的是野生动物方面的研究。嗯、但是我记得啊，呃，小时候我看过一个，我爸爸妈妈给我买一本黄世旭的，好像《天上的星星》嗯，那本书让我非常非常的着迷。但是后来为什么没有往天文上发展？其实，呃，是因为生物、野生动物、动植物，其实在我们周边很容易看到。天上的星星在我们那个年代，其实设备又不太好，所以用肉眼看到的其实非常有限。所以我的问题是想请教两位，就是说，刚刚台上有三三颗星嘛，我是觉得说非常的 surprise， 说两位都是女王陛下啊，所以我想请教一下，最后我们是平民跟奴隶的层级。<笑>我想请教一下 ，female， 就是在你们所接触的环境中间，又在那个年代，然后决心决心投入到天文这个领域，是怎么样的一个机缘会 lead you to the、uh, astrophysics？ You know,、um, because during that period of time, you know, the equipment is not that well,、um, and also probably they encourage female to do something else than become a physics. So I'm a wildlife biologist. I say because the wildlife I can see everywhere. It's very easy for me to approach those wildlife. But star is so so far away. So what happened to you that you you know you you went on this、uh, the the path is not normally the female student will go. When I moved to high school at age twelve, as we do in Britain. Um, 
mixed classes, boys and girls, but the boys went to do woodwork, metalwork. The girls went to learn cookery and needlework. The boys got to do science. The girls did not. And I wanted to do science. So my parents spoke with the head teachers very firmly. Um, also in my class was a girl whose father was a doctor. He wanted her to do science. And so the second time the science class met, there were all the boys and three girls. The first time that teacher had taught girls. And clearly we were dangerous. We had to sit right up against his desk in the front, center front. And we did physics that first term and I loved it. And I came top of the class. I got 97% and I know what went wrong. We were asked what was the speed of light. And I wrote down the answer and it was correct. And then for the first time in my life, I looked at that number and thought, that's very big and changed per second to per hour and lost 3%. <笑> 对，我觉得这个很重要。在他那个年代，刚上初中，十二岁的时候，他就希望做科学，但是那个年代的男生是去做木工、金属科学，女生是去做缝纫跟烹饪。但是他跟另外一个女孩子，那个女孩子爸
uh, all the courses are for understanding and analysis, analytical skill. By that time, the boys will go passing the girls. 到了第二年的课都是分析理解的物理课程的男孩子就必然会超过女生了 ，and we trusted him, and this, and this never happened. <笑><笑>我们信赖着这个老师，结果这个现象四年都没有发生。Yeah, that's what happened. 历史会重演的。<笑> OK， <笑>每次碰到学姐，当初听我的话，你就知道你们未来是怎么样。<笑> yeah, OK， 好，有没有其他的问题 ？OK， 好，这边的女，我这位女士，先她，然后再，哎，先她吗 ？OK， 好，小朋友，你好，她把这个机会让给了小朋友。来，呃，白爱心跟跟。跟跟中子星有什么差别 ？OK， <笑>非常严肃的问题。What's the difference between white dwarf and a neutron star? Right. Okay. The neutron star is much, much smaller. It has about the same weight, but because it's much, much smaller, it's much more dense and has therefore behaves differently than a white dwarf. Yeah. 中子星比白矮星小很多，两个的质量差不多。白矮星的大小呢，如果是一个太阳质量的话，它的大小大概像跟地球一样，地球是一万两千公里啊。但是中子星呢，大概只有二十到三十公里，同样质量压缩到二十三十公里，那是中子星。所以两个密度完全不一样，所以它表现出来的性质是完全不一样。很好的问题，你几年级？四年级啊，大学四年级。好，好，我们下一位。Um, thank you, Dr. Bernal and Dr. Chu. I have a question for both of you. So, as women in science and let's say in any ex field of expertise, we have to talk louder, work harder, and prove harder than our male counterparts. So, do you have any world words of advices or any words of encouragements for all the women in here, for the younger、um, girls in here who are future scientists and maybe their male counterparts? Do you have any words of encouragement, advice for all of us? Thank you. <laughs> Not only you have to work harder, but you earn less. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like the situation here is quite like the situation in Britain.、Um, increasingly, in British universities,、um, because I work in universities, we are now monitoring carefully. How well women advance, and how well men advance, how well women's pay goes up, how well men's pay goes up, and we are taking more care to equalise. We are more aware of what we call unconscious bias.、Um, I have an example from Britain. I don't know if it works here. Of unconscious bias,、um, often you have to fill out a form, and it asks your name, your address, and whether you are male or female. It always puts the male first, even though they're not in alphabetic order. That is an example of unconscious bias, and it sends a message to the women that they are second class, a subliminal message. 哎，我觉得这倒是很有趣的。他说，英国看起来好像台湾跟英国是一样的哈，也是对女性不公平。他说，当然现在很努力的要把这两个拉到平等，但有一些呢是下意识的、无意识的造成的偏差。就像填表格，你的姓名、你的身份证字号，然后等到你的性别的时候，永远是男性在前面 ，male 后面是 female。如果你按照字母排序的话，应该是 female 在前面。所以，他这就是一无意识的偏差，让别人觉得女性就是在男性后面。中文用笔画的话，那 male 四个字母，那个 female 是六个字母，就比较长。<笑>然后，可是你中文的男跟女，女的笔画也比较少啊。如果要把它写在前面的话，干脆这样吧。以后我们给朱伟花的表格，那女性就写在第一个，还超过了名字，比名字还重要的是女性。Anyway， 好，还有没有其他的？刚才看到其他的问题啊，那边那个同学的问题。的确也是，我觉得这点是我们自己需要思考的，无意识的偏见。呃、uh, um, ，嗯 ，Dr. Bernard, I have a question. Um, is black hole denser than a neutron star? 
yes, black hole is denser than everything. It is infinity density because it is point size, zero size. So you cannot get denser than that or smaller than that. Yeah,因为无限高的一个密度但是我觉得有趣的是我们都知道那个有原子主要讲的压力其实就是抵抗重力的因为重力是一切的原始东西在往里面压的那你当你电子被挤压的不能再小的时候那个叫电子碱病压力简单的碱病吞的碱病压力是靠的那个碱病压力抗拒重力的但再再
，外面一定有很多东西，所以他去找这个东西。And then they have to apply telescope time with a different title subject, and then use the time to observe the、uh, Kuiper Belt object until 1992. 直到1992年 ，1992 QB1 被发现了以后，他们瞬间就。获得大名，然后刻享盛名，就所有的时间啊、奖项都来了，邵逸夫奖、Kavli Prize 什么都来了。然后以后别人就会说，他们早就知道海王星外面有东西。Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, but I guess there are people they they also refer to like what you said. They go back, they went back there to find their own observing record and notice all these observing this observation of pulsars, but they just don't didn't notice that. Yes, although you have to be observing with a very、um, rapid turnaround, a, a short time constant,、mm -hmm. and most people did not do that because the signal to noise is worse. They observe with a time constant of thirty seconds or something like that. So、mm -hmm. no way you see the pulses with a thirty-second time、mm -hmm. constant. Yeah, 过去他们时间还是拉得很长，三十秒 But now you're talking about sub-second. Frequency, yeah, right. Yeah. So, how did you do? Did you、um, did you send up an order to purchase high-speed printer or something for that purpose? No, but we did have to build this very very big radio telescope、uh -huh. because when you use short time constant, you have more noise.、Mm -hmm. If you use longer time constant, longer integration, the signal to noise ratio is better.、Mm -hmm. So, if you want to use very short. Time constant to see pulsars. You need a very big telescope. So to originally, get big when you when you build a telescope, you know the big area, or you have extended the area. No, we we had a big area because we were looking for the rapid fluctuations of quasars,、okay. the scintillation of quasars. Yeah, 最早他们是要查要要去搜寻类星体的闪烁，因为闪烁的非常快，所以你需要有很大很大一个面积的观测的这个天线，才能够提高它的信噪比。因为你的时间很短，那如果你要看时间比较长的话，你面积不用那么大。但当时他们去搜寻窥藏，我觉得也是很巧的。他们要搜寻窥藏的快速闪烁，也就需要用很大的面积。没有想到这个面积刚好可以用在 POSA 那么短的时间分析上面。Yeah, what what I was asking is that when you saw this fluff, so you call it fluff, right?、Mm. Fluff. What's that?、Oh, the hair. What? Scruff. 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 What's the scruff? Scruff is just something messy. You know, like a teenager's room. It's scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scruff. That scruff is just 乱七八糟的东西，对对。And you notice there's a scruff, and there may be something hidden in the scruff. So you 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 change convert it to a high speed printer or pen. Yes. Whenever it approaches that point. That's right. But that needed extra short time constant and extra high speed. So I and more paper. More and more paper, <laughs> yes, and lots more paper. Okay. So I had to go to the observatory each day to set up that special observation. Oh, I see. And I did it for a month, and there was nothing. And I think my thesis advisor said, "Aha." So you can see, right? It's just that every two hours, that—that's a big distance. Twenty-three hours, fifty-six seconds, fifty-six minutes. That's a long, very long piece of paper. Too long. Yeah, and when you notice that's approaching to that point, then you you will go into the observatory and switch to high speed printer. Well, I go to the observatory every day for the routine,、uh -huh. change the settings,、um, but then I was also going just before it was due to see that bit of sky to make、okay. the high speed recording. And、yeah. why? How come for months you don't see anything? Because we had also accidentally discovered another phenomenon, and that is、um, in interstellar space, there are some electrons, and they are in clouds. They are not smooth, and these clouds can cause the fading of the pulsar signal for several weeks or months. And I was unlucky that I had a month when it was faded. 所以他先注意到了这个讯号存在，所以呢，他就想法每天在那个时间进去调成高速，希望能看到那个讯号，把它拉开仔细看。结果一个月都没有看到任何东西了。
，因为在星际空间里面会有一些不均匀的电子云，电子云会把 POSA 的讯号消失、吸收掉，所以看不到了。那当时一个月下来什么都看不到，他的指导论文的老板就说：“啊哈，我是对的，你是错的。”当时老板就认为你是错的。Yes,、yeah, so、you don't get any, you don't get lots of positive support from your advisor. <laughs> Unfortunately, OK， 好。呃，馆长跟两位，呃，好好，那想，呃，想请问一个问题了哈，是因为说人才培育对一个领域的发展非常非常重要。那像我们台大有两位优秀的这个校友在这里，一位是我们孙馆长，一位是我们的这个朱所长，啊，呃。那我想第一个问题就想想请问朱所长，您当初选呃台大物理系当成是您的第一志愿，不晓得有有什么考量？然后也想请请问两位，呃，就是说对对于未来的这个天文人才的培育有没有什么样的建议或是做法？谢谢。呃，我当初啊进物理系啊，这个是嗯，其实我中学的时候最最喜欢的一门科目是生物，很喜欢生物，可是。可是数学也不错，我数学一直是班上最高分。我想说，不能训练鼻祖啊。好了，每门课都很好啊。是<笑>我我英文也是最高分。<笑>我想说去，那一定要去念甲组，不念甲组人家不知道我数学好。那那念甲组的话，那联考那分数，假如说，假如说我那那时候物理系是第一志愿哈，那那六十分数最高。我说如果说我不不填物理系，物理化学数学这样填的话。假如说我填到，我其实对数学我是喜欢数学了，我喜欢数学。可是如果说我进数学系，黄家说他一定是进不了物理系，进数学，就会有一种虚荣心哦。<笑>那填志愿就填就是台大的物理化学数学，然后清大物理化学数学就照这样填下去，填到最后再只填了带二十几个志愿。然后学校说你不行，你一定要填四十个志愿，我就要把名传名传的那个所有的系全部放在下面，当然那些是用不到的。那个，所以当时就这样糊里糊涂就进了台大物理系。其实，在我们那一届，其实那个取那个录取最高就是低最低分的标准，已经是换到电机系最高了。所以我们那是最后一届的，就是那个，对，我们那届已经电机系已经已经超过物理系了。然后物理系念念了四年，当时我不知道孙老师当初对台大物理系的教授想法怎么样，很烂。很很少见面，很很少，啊、<笑>你一定很少见面，是不是？我们那时候那台大物理系的教授非常非常差，台湾最好的物理教授在哪里？在清华。所以我大学毕业的时候是想说，啊，去考研究所，去清华念研究所，念物理研究所。我爸说你给我滚到美国去。那那我就<笑>哦，你爸讲话跟你一个口气啊。那<笑>跟跟我爸学嘛。我我爸说你要你要去美国念书啊，都就是呃，那我就申请学校。可是大学的时候，四年下来被物理物理老师误了四年哈，啊，对物理其实有点惶恐。我想说，我就是去念什么？我说我一定要，一定要，第一定要出国。但是我那我念什么东西呢？我申请学校，申请六个学校，申请六个研究所，四个是物理系，两个是天文系。然后天文两个天文系，一个是哈，一个是 Harvard， 一个是 Berkeley。就 Harvard 他收了我收我的那个报名费之后，他就给我说 No。他先问我说：“你是不是这些有钱人的亲戚？”我说：“都不是。”他就给我 no、啊。哈佛还会问你是有钱人的亲戚啊？<笑>对，如果说我是我，如果说我的 last name 是 Rockefeller 或什么东西啊，说是 Kennedy 什么话，那一定上了，或者是 Bush 那也上了，对。那就后来就上了，我就考虑两个学校，一个是一个是 Berkeley 的天文系，一个是 Stanford 的物理系。就后来就两个挑，那两个挑回来，我们班上一个同学，他去 Stanford， 我说：“那我去 Berkeley。”因为我是想是跟以前跟台大物理系的离越远越好，所以就这样糊里糊涂进了天文了。啊，进了天文其实进刚开始的时候，我以为说天文完全就是要学广义相对论、宇宙论，其实根本不是，不是完全不是这回事。我进了天文系之后，开始哎呦哎呦，要要看星星啊，而星星还有不同的星等，我都不知道，以前还不知道，我知道有红巨星、白矮星，就快上课就上了，然后说说什么 M d o r f M。M 矮星，我说什么叫 M d o r f 我星星有什么什么那种星等，我都不知道，我就从头学起，学一学，就哎也还不错啊，也还 OK 啦，就还蛮好玩的。后来最好玩就是开始观测，要到山里面去，要飞到遥远的天文台，去山里面去做观测。这一观测下来，哎呀不得了，那我不走了。<笑>
。对，你知道，你知道我那时候，我们那时候，你看，从从加州，我我做观测是要到智利去，我飞到智利去，到山里面去观测，在那深山里面哈，那个看那个晚上看天上星星哦，哦，那天。那个没有月亮的晚上，那个天上星星好亮啊！你更不知道说天上居然有这么多星星。然后后来还可以用用太哈勃太空望远镜，那真是啊，太快乐了。所以就留在天文里面。所以我进入天文是这样进来。那我当初呃，就是台台训练台台湾天文人才哦，很多台湾学生就是有台湾学生要到美国去念书，可美国很多学校在八零年代九零年代说根本不收台湾学生的，所以我我很很。高兴一点就是我们伊利诺大学，我们当初我在那边的时候，我就说，你们要收谈，要收学生，你看你们收了一些大陆学生，你看哪一根线还在天文里面的，他们来了以后就要么就跳槽跳跳到电机系或跳到别的系，或是毕业以后就完全就离开天文。你看台湾台湾学生到我们这边来念完天文，念完的博士学位，你看到到到那个嗯，师大的管教授，或者管一阵教授。然后后来，赖世平的、的清华的赖教授，你看台湾出来的人，你看念完天文，还去教书，做得好好的。你们看，你们要收台湾学生，还收大陆学生 ？OK， 所以，所以我们那边就收，后来就收了很多台湾学生。所以你看，现在台湾学生学成，就天文界学成归国的，很多是伊利诺，非常优秀的人才。有时候我我很高兴，就说当当初伊利诺大学就提供他们一个很好的教育的机会，让他们以后学成就是。当时他们自己很好，不是我不是说学校好了，哎、呃，学校 OK 了。我，我<笑><笑>他们这些人才是真是他们自己非常努力。现在我们回来，你看我们刚刚有个玉山学者，就是呃杨香怡，刚回来，呃他他嗯明年年初回来，非非常优秀的人才，还有潘国全啊，这些都是清华的教授，都很不错。我我们中那个中研院物理所呃天文天文物理所也有也有好几个是因为我大学回来的，所以。训练天文人才是一个长期的，所以需要长期的努力。我最近好像美国现在又不太收台湾学生了，这点是有点值得忧虑。哎呀，我我想，但其实朱老师刚刚谈了好多我们会讲到的事情。从最原始开始讲，我觉得台大物理系当时你进台大物理系，它是输电机系还是输好几个了？电机系第二就是物理系吗？还是怎么样？物理系第二，电机第一，我们第五了。没有哦，你们第五，你们沦落到第五了。你为什么用的字眼都是这么伤害人的字眼？<笑>我们那时候电机工学院只，当时台大工学院只有四个系：电机、化工、机械、土木。那我们在建中毕业的，其实跟你状况差不多，就觉得我当初分数我够进电进电机系，我是没有填它而已。我是想说，市农工商，商为市民之末，工为市民，倒数第二，不能去念。很很很迂腐，很笨，当初很笨。你就直接跟电机系这样讲好了，好吧？<笑>我已经我已经帮你出了这口恶气了。为什么呢？因为我们是第五，当时我还真的填志愿哈。我们在建中毕业的时候，完全没有概念，不是说自己像他一样是 determine 要做物理了。我们就从电机系开始填，电机、化工、机械、土木，第五个是物理。结果呢，很巧的进了物理系，那进了物理系就很高兴。后来才发觉进物理系很值得。所以有一次，商周吧，商业周刊还是天下杂志访问我，那个标题竟然就是我讲的那一句话：我人生第一个幸运就是没有进第一志愿。台大电机系就极端不爽，所以我想电机系最觉得不爽，第一个是林百里，林百里老是骂电机系；第二个是孙卫星，孙卫星觉得没有进电机系是他人生第一个大的幸运，没有进电机系。当然，另外事情是我们二零零五年全球物理年，我们请了林志玲。来做我们的代言人，教育部次长帮我找的林志玲做了一个广告，结果好多人去看物理。第二年，物理系就超过电机系，<笑>所以吴瑞北当时电机系系主任吴瑞北就极端不爽，说孙教授、孙文新，你使用这个肮脏的 paper 找林志玲来，把物理系提高了。但那个时候我们大学毕业的时候还是一样，上课我们是努力听讲的，我大学四年没有翘过任何一堂课，除了公假之外。到课堂上睡觉是另外一回事，但是我没有翘过任何一堂课。I didn't ditch the class at all in the university. I just sit there and doze off， <笑>打瞌睡。然后四年那个时候，台大讲的这句话最好大家不要扩了，扩的话我们两个人都很惨。
当时的学生讲台大怎么批评的？一流的学生，二流的老师，三流的行政，四流的设备，是这样讲。这学生都是靠自己学，所以台大学生也其实蛮难教的。但是不管怎么样，毕业了以后，我们申请了八个学校，四个物理 （four physics, four astronomy）， 四个天文的。到后来呢 ，UCLA 给我最好的 scholar scholarship 奖学金，所以我就去了 UCLA 念天文，那是第二个幸运，做天文。那毕业了以后，第三个幸运进到 NASA。毕业之前就去 NASA 做卫星观测，然后毕业以后进到 NASA， 看到 NASA 的科研、教育跟推广都非常非常的精彩。那，呃，接下来第四个幸运是我已经忘记了，年纪大到连第四个幸运是什么？哦，进到 NASA， 我做观测，我觉得做天文观测，就像刚,刚朱友花讲的，做观测，上山下海，走到山间水边去，那是接触大自然，那些经验，我觉得到后来当博物馆馆长。对博物馆馆长这个工作都会有很大的帮助，让你第一线接触到大自然，知道是怎么回事。好，我们时间。我我再加一点啊、哦嗯，我那时候我们我们最早做观测的时候是用底片照相的。OK， 你们现在用什么 CCD， 用数位照相机什么东西？那根本你完全没有感觉，没有什么感觉。我们用底片照相，<笑>我底片曝光的时候哈、哦，你想想看，那个光子从那么遥远的星体，通过这么远的地离。打到我这个底片上哎，我这底片上那光子从这边走过耶，啊感光哎，你想拿着底片看了，感动的眼泪都快掉出来。这个是跟着我这人跟大自然融为一体，你知道吗？我们，我跟你只差四年，但我们这代是 CCD 开始进入天文的那一年，开始用 CCD 相机了。你知道我们有多同情那些以前用底片的人吗？人家底片的量子效率跟 CCD 量子效率简直是不能比的，而且更好笑的底片是玻璃底片，是不是？你们有用玻璃底片？玻璃底片，我们那有时候那个放底片那个相机也没有，是两寸，就是两寸乘两寸。那底片拿来是八寸乘十寸，我们要切，要切这个切玻璃哦，而在而且不能开灯哦，你的灯而且红灯都不能的，完全是摸黑的，就拿这样切，切之后这么大一块玻璃要啪把把剥剥开。我手上都被破了多少次？那个被那玻璃刮破的啊，那很很痛苦。Wow. 不但不但那个那个要切小之后，还要再拿去烤箱去烤。<笑>我有时候跟人家讲说我在烤底片，人家说你烤什么？你们烤烤烤烤饼干？不是饼干，我在我在烤底片。那底片要要用要用那个氮气吹过去，然后微微的氮气吹过去，微风这样吹过去，然后温度在烤，烤过之后让它变成比较比较灵灵灵敏一点。Do you want to know the story I heard about? We went to Lake Tianwen Tai, Jiajuo Tai School, Lake Tianwen Tai. They told us that back then, the people who used to use wall mounted 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 我没有想到那个玻璃底片给朱友花老师这么巨大的感动。那个那是非那是非常非常的艰苦的年代，很辛苦啊！你晚上工作了一个晚上之后，天亮了，你还要去洗底片。对，洗完底片，有我听说过有一个天文学家，他观测了一个晚上，回到回到暗房去要洗底片，他很累，你知道？他他他把没有把他把眼睛闭起来，他以为他关了灯，他是眼睛闭起来，他以为灯关掉了。<笑>他就把把底片箱一打开，一拿出来，哎呀，全部破，全完一一整夜的功夫完全完全白费掉。你还叫你们那个叫现代天文学吗？<笑>所以，嗯，我真的觉得这是一个天文发展的过程。很高兴 ，We're so happy that we have Dr. Bernal and Dr. Zhu Yuhua 能够跟大家 join our discussion。很感谢各位。我们来宾今天在这边，我们扮演都扮演学生的角色，能够听到 Dr. Bennell describing、um, her path of discovery and 他们的整个的发展的过程，我觉得对我们都会有很大的启发的。很高兴，感谢各位来宾的参加，也谢谢 Thanks very much to Dr. Bennell and also to Yuhua。我们谢谢他们两位，谢谢。